Welcome to the VMware Telco Cloud Platform 5G demonstration, the cloud-native solution with consistent infrastructure and multi-layer automation. As part of the Telco Cloud Platform, Telco Cloud Automation simplifies the operation of Kubernetes for multi-cloud deployments while providing centralizing management and governance for clusters. vSphere and Tanzu deliver a self-service access to this underpinning consistent infrastructure while providing observability and troubleshooting for Kubernetes workloads. vSAN is a hyper-converged virtualized storage solution with a unified management plane for both VM and container-based workloads. With vSAN, storage provisioning for CNFs is automated through its dynamic volume provisioning capability. This enables Kubernetes clusters running on vSphere to provision persistent volumes. NSX provides networking and security for network functions, while Antrea provides seamless container connectivity for Kubernetes clusters. Antrea creates an autonomous data plane for Kubernetes clusters, where only the host is connected to NSX. Antrea is built on an open vSwitch and a purpose-built CNI for Kubernetes, designed to run anywhere Kubernetes runs, whether it's on-premises, public cloud, or at the edge. For more information on specific components bundled within Telco Cloud Platform, please visit its release note. With this demo, we'll use Telco Cloud Platform's CAS automation capability to demonstrate how easy it is to deploy Tanzu Kubernetes cluster, where we can run various CNFs on top to support a wide range of use cases like private 5G, mobile core, virtual CDN, and SD-WAN. In summary, we'll go through, first, cluster template designing and creation, second, deployment of a cluster instance onto the infrastructure, third, cluster customization to match CNF requirements, and fourth, operations entailing the lifecycle management of the cluster. With Telco Cloud Platform, we can manage all clusters from a central location through its automation tool. The automation becomes extremely important considering that 5G networks consist of hundreds of edge sites, hosting potentially thousands of clusters. First, let's bootstrap a base cluster that contains a set of extensions and nodes configurations over the infrastructure. But before doing that, let's create a Kubernetes cluster template to deploy the cluster. The template is the blueprint of the cluster, which contains the required configuration. With Telco Cloud Platform, we can use the template to deploy multiple clusters for consistency and repeatability. Now, let's deep dive into four simple steps to create the template. Step one, select whether the cluster is for management or for a workload. Step two, provide cluster configuration information, such as the version of Kubernetes, tools to use like Helm charts, CNI, and container storage interfaces for vSAN to dynamically provision persistent storage volumes. Step three, Configure master node and worker node to specify the details of VMs for both nodes. Step four, review the details and add the template. Now, let's create a demo management template. Go to CAS Infrastructure, Cluster Templates, and then click Add. It's displaying the Add Kubernetes Template Wizard. Let's provide the details for our cluster and select Cluster Type as Management Cluster. By default, the latest version of Kubernetes is selected. Next, let's define the cluster configuration and extensions. In the Master Node Configuration tab, enter the number of controller node VMs to be created. For the network, enter the labels to group the networks. For the management network, Master Node can only support one label, so enter the appropriate label for this profile. Once done, these labels are applied to the Kubernetes node. In the Worker Node Configuration tab, add a node pool, which is a set of nodes that have similar properties. Now, we just review the details and add the template for later use. Similarly, let's create a demo workload template. For this, go to the Add Kubernetes Template Wizard and select Cluster Type as Workload Cluster. For Cluster Configuration, select the Kubernetes version from the drop-down menu. Select a Container Network Interface, CNI. In this demo, we use Antrea and Multis. Multis is mandatory when the network functions require multiple interfaces. Select a Container Storage Interface, CSI, from available options, either vSphere CSI or NFS Client. For this demo, let's use vSphere CSI. Only one storage class can be present for each type, meaning we cannot add multiple storage class for the same type. For the tools, choose Helm, which is used to package Kubernetes deployments. Now, let's configure both the master and worker nodes. In the Master Node Configuration tab, Enter the number of controller node VMs to be created. In the Worker Node Configuration tab, add a node pool, 
which can create multiple node pools based on the requirements. Under CPU Manager Policy, let's use the default Kubernetes policy for the cluster we're building now. This allows the scheduler to balance the CPU's utilization across the cluster pods, or affix the CPU to a certain cluster pod to enable CPU pinning or exclusive CPU. The CPU pinning or exclusive CPU is useful when we don't want the workload performance to be negatively impacted by CPU throttling or scheduling latency. Once all these are configured, we can review the template and add it to the template catalog for future deployment. This template catalog comes in very handy if we're dealing with massive numbers of clusters across dispersed network domains. And of course, we can return to the template configuration at any time to make necessary changes to fit our needs. Now that we have the template, let's deploy our new cluster over the infrastructure. To do so, we go back to the Cluster Instances Inventory and select the options to deploy a Kubernetes cluster with five simple steps. First, select infrastructure for the cluster to be deployed. Second, select cluster template that we created earlier. Third, deploy the Kubernetes cluster. Fourth, configure the master node. Fifth, configure the worker node. Let's start with selecting where to deploy the cluster by using the template we just created. Telco Cloud Platform's automation and auto discovery capabilities provide appropriate values to be selected for all the cluster resources by correlating the template requirements and the available resources of the selected infrastructure. This dramatically simplifies the configuration process. We have mostly defined both the master node and the worker node already when we created the template. The only elements remaining at this moment are the network assignments to both the master node and worker node. Same as template creation, we can review the configuration before deploying the cluster. All good, let's deploy. We repeat these similar steps to deploy a workload cluster. We can observe the instantiation process from the cluster instances inventory and validate if the cluster is deployed successfully. Once the cluster is instantiated, we can drill down and see its configuration and the nodes inside the cluster. The cluster configuration tab displays the Kubernetes version, upgrade history, CNI and CSI configurations, syslog server details, any tools associated with the cluster, and harbor repository details. The master nodes tab displays the details of the master node, labels attached to the node, and network labels. The worker nodes tab displays the existing node pools of a Kubernetes cluster. The tasks tab displays the progress of the cluster level tasks and their status. Management cluster displays the progress of its tasks and all the workload cluster tasks that are managed by this cluster. It also displays the node pool tasks of all the workload clusters. Workload cluster displays the progress of cluster tasks and node pool tasks. As we can see, Kubernetes clusters are deployed on the vSphere compute cluster, and the workload cluster consists of three worker nodes with vSAN enabled, which has native container storage capabilities to allow workloads to mount persistent volumes. For networking, we are using NSXT standard for management plane traffic and Entrea for container data plane networking, allowing communications between different CNFs instantiated inside the worker nodes. Now that we've deployed clusters successfully, let's instantiate CNFs. One of the key benefits of Telco Cloud Platform is its late binding feature, which dynamically configures the underlying infrastructure resources based on the requirements of CNFs to be deployed. This prevents over-provisioning of the valuable hardware resources as Telco Cloud Platform only allocates pass-through resources only at the time of CNF deployment. Now, let's look at how this late binding feature works. First, add a sample CNF catalog into our registry by selecting the descriptor file corresponding to the CNF. As shown, you can customize a CNF's infrastructure according to its unique requirements. Customizing the infrastructure requirements enables you to create a cluster, instantiate, and deploy the network functions without any manual user inputs. Before we instantiate, let's check the current capacity settings on the workload cluster nodes by logging into the management node and checking the network settings on the vSphere client. Then, instantiate it by selecting the catalog. As shown here, Telco Cloud Platform checks the current node settings and shows the desired state after instantiating the CNF. Provide a namespace and select Default Repo URL. Enter any pre-instantiation properties necessary for your CNF. Upload a descriptor YAML file with the new Helm chart values and instantiate the CNF. 
The cluster is customized according to the differences detected between the CNF catalog and the actual configuration present in the cluster during the instantiation. During customization, the VM config plugin tries to fit the virtual machines to the correct NUMA nodes of the ESXi server based on its SRIOV, pass-through, and pinning specifications. On vSphere Web Client, we can see that each node in the node pool is modified with the addition of two SRIOV NICs. Also, from the CLI, it's evident that the huge pages configuration has been modified. This modification was triggered by the requirements specified in the CNF override file. Once the necessary changes are implemented to the node pool, the CNF will be instantiated successfully. The dashboard provides visibility on current cluster state, available resources, performance, and alarms across the registered infrastructure. To summarize, we first deployed Tanzu Kubernetes clusters using the templates. We demonstrated the designing and the creation of the templates to deploy both management and workload clusters. We then instantiated CNF on the workload clusters in an automated manner using the catalog. Last but not least, we talked about the importance of late binding and demonstrated its benefits. With Telco Cloud Platform and its automation capabilities, deploying Kubernetes clusters and instantiating CNFs have never been easier. Your operations are simplified and consistent across multiple clouds. Your OPEX is reduced. You can focus on your innovation and introduce new services to the market faster.